So just starting now by adding some gesso. And I just want to kind of start laying in a little bit of color. And uh, I've kind of mixed together this turquoise uh, blue um, and then bringing it down to uh, a little alizarin crimson, create a nice little pink uh, glow here in the sky. Um, I've been wanting to paint now a painting of the old historic Route 66 Highway for, for quite a while. I've been thinking about this. And uh, I really wanted to do sort of a an evening or early kind of like a night scene. Um, something that had some, some really cool mood to it. And, um, and that way I can really kind of uh, create some really cool contrast uh, with my colors, bringing a lot of dark, muted, uh, shadows and colors that um, I could then bring in some uh, some highlights with my uh, with my lighting that I wanted to paint in as well. So um, I've kind of outlined this uh, this canyon here in the background, and I'm keeping my colors very cool um, using uh, kind of blue grays that I've mixed together. I've mixed together uh, ultramarine blue uh, and um, some burnt umber to kind of create that, that distant gray color. And then using those same colors, just adding a little bit of purple to my, mount, my uh, mountain range. It's just a little bit closer now, or the, these mesas here. Um, so Obviously, Route 66 goes through many states, but I kind of wanted to focus uh, through um, kind of that Arizona section of, of that drive, of that historic drive. Um, one of my favorite songs, and kind of where I came up with this idea for this painting, was um, I've always loved the song Hotel California from the Eagles. And I think of that dark desert highway. And I, as I started thinking about that, and I've been thinking about this for a while, I really wanted to kind of create that cool, kind of, um, it's summertime, um, taking a road trip down Route 66, going through a dark desert highway. Um, that was really kind of where all this came from. And so I kind of got some inspiration through that. And as I, as I started thinking and contemplating how I wanted to put this together, uh, that was certainly my inspiration for this. Now, as I'm kind of working in the back here, I'm keeping everything very subtle, keeping my colors very cool and very soft. And that will help to create that illusion of distance. Now, as I work forward, um, and the reason I wanted to use a black gesso canvas is I really wanted that dark, um, that real dark, subtle sort of theme to this painting. Again, we're talking about kind of a late evening, um, and, and we're in we're in the uh, the desert, and uh, so my colors I'm just keeping them very kind of grayed out, honestly. Um, and I was really thinking a lot about my color wheel and using my complement colors for this. So we have a lot of grays, a lot of purples, a lot of greens, and then using the complement colors that go with those. So yellow with purple and red with green. Um, that type of that type of complement I thought would would kind of uh, work very well for doing um, this this really uh, late evening dark dark painting and so I'm kind of working here now I'm just kind of laying things in um, and trying to figure it all out I, I had a very basic idea of what what I wanted in this painting. Um, I wasn't a hundred percent sure exactly um, where I was going with this particularly. Uh, I just kind of let it kind of happen as I went. I had some loose ideas 
about how I wanted to do this. But um, just kind of building in here, kind of a neat, uh, I don't know, like a little ridge here that um, is kind of dipping down into this valley uh, leading toward the mesas was kind of the, th the theme I wanted to get here. So I'm using a lot of purple for this painting. Um, many of the colors that I'm mixing, I'm adding purples to it because uh, I always feel like, and I've mentioned this before, that purple is a natural shadow color. And um, I think it adds just a lot of, a lot of cool mood to a painting using purple. It's one of my favorites to use. I, I would caution you. I want to be very kind of um, sparing with your purples because you could certainly uh, overkill on it. So, um, But I usually will mix purples with my siennas and my umbers and my blues, um, my greens and my reds. I like to use purples with those colors because I can kind of gray them out, gray that purple out a little bit. And, um, and it's not nearly as offensive. So I wanted to bring in some cactus here and I wanted to have some subtle um, shadow kind of getting cast off uh, from, you know, from this, from this moonlight um, and also kind of the setting sun that's kind of going down into the horizon. So we're gonna have long stretched shadows um, as the sun is kind of setting. And then this, this road that's just kind of going off into the distance. So just to continue to try to create that illusion. And um, I'm using, uh, you know, again, my, my, my road is with my grays. It's blue and umber. And um, I'm using Indian yellow for the, uh, for the, the line, the, the little jagged lines that we've got in the middle of the road. Now just kind of coming back here with my fan brush and I'm using a little bit of black and a little bit of green and just kind of creating a subtle little tree here. And then I wanted to have this this sort of a convenient, um, convenient store or gas station kind of here off to the side in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, and I'm just kind of blocking this all in with uh, charcoal black. I wanted to get um, all that done first in black because I always feel like um, as I start to introduce my colors in this case I'm using umber and I'm keeping the the umber pretty transparent actually um, I really wanted to have a lot of that black underpainting on on this um, gas station to really show through and so when I keep my colors very transparent, it'll allow that, that underpainting to show through. And it kind of gives that illusion of, of kind of an old weathered uh, building here. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to go for. Now I've mixed an orange with um, a little bit of, of uh, a little bit of yellow um, I've added a little bit of alizarin crimson as well to kind of create this orangey color that I wanted to build in here. This is going to be the beginning of the lights that are going to be uh, shining in the shop. And if you've ever been down historic Route 66, there's a lot of these old um, gas stations, kind of vintage gas stations that have been around forever. And they've got a lot of uh, kind of really cool memorabilia and signage um, placed all over these buildings. And that's what I really wanted to uh, create uh, with this building. But uh, kind of bringing in uh, the, uh, that, that Route 66 sign that uh, is so kind of so historic and so familiar. Um, as well and um, and then kind of make the illusion that uh, I've got um, 
I've got a couple lamps that are shining on this sign here on this building just to kind of light it up. And um, this will be the, gen the general store sign that I wanted to put here. And I'm using my acrylic paint pen, which is just a, a black acrylic paint. Um, so much easier to get straight lettering. I prefer it over trying to uh, to do that with a rigger brush. And I've talked a lot about that in past videos as well. Um, that I picked up that pen in the craft section of, uh, of a Walmart actually. Very cheap, they're just a couple bucks. And, um, and yeah, I was really happy that I found that. Now coming back and adding a little bit more of that Indian yellow as well as a little bit of cad yellow. And I'm just scumbling this on. This is a dry brush scumble uh, on top of that dried uh, kind of pumpkin orange color that we have is the underpainting underneath that. And as I apply this uh, a little transparent, um, it'll show through. And then just using my airbrush here to kind of give that illusion that we've got kind of a halo of light uh, creating that shiny effect here. And I really wanted this to be nice and bright um, to really contrast with all the dark um, throughout this painting and, and throughout the landscape. So just adding a couple little things here that, that are hanging on walls, some shelving, some, some tables. Um, and a lot of this is just going to be nothing more than just a silhouette. Uh, I really want to keep the light shining really bright here. So we just need some basic subtle indications um, that there's something going on there inside the store. I got my little person that I silhouetted in there as well. Um, and uh, that person is just kind of milling around the store, um, just pumped some gas uh, in, in his car, which I'll paint in later, and uh, just paying for his gas before he jumps back onto the highway and heads toward the Mesa. So adding a little bit more of my airbrush here, just using some titanium white and uh, getting that sort of that glow that, that I wanted to get in there. And I love using the airbrush uh, just to create some really cool effects. And that airbrush I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I, I bought it for about 150 bucks. Pretty cheap little airbrush. Um, and it does the, the job pretty commendably. I, I'm not an airbrush artist and I don't I don't get all uh, creative with them. I just use them for really basic things uh, like uh, light glowing and, and uh, mist and fog and, and things of that nature. All right, so we're going to continue to work on, on our building here, just slowly building this out as I go, working from the back to the front and um, kind of adding some of the signage that I want to start putting around the, uh, the side of the building here um, and uh, kind of reintroducing some of my, uh, my block in color since uh, using that airbrush, it kind of um, hazed them out a little bit. But now it's just kind of like um, really building out this building now and kind of having some fun. Um, like I said, I wanted a lot of signage. These are kind of common common gas stations you could run into uh, if you ever take a trip on uh, Route 66. So as I mentioned, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I've really been thinking about this painting for several months honestly. I wasn't sure when I wanted to get to it and I've been doing a little research and um, been kind of looking up images and reading about Route 66 and just finding whatever information I can. Um, and I was slowly uh, just kind of building out this, this um, painting in my head here for the last several months. And I uh, was just glad that I finally got around to actually uh, getting it done. And it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> and so the key here is really just kind of adding some really neat detail. This is going to be uh, one of those old soda um, freezers that uh, they used to keep uh, on the outside of these buildings. And I uh, wanted to get that painting painted in here real quick here. It's just going to be a nice little 
red soda freezer and uh, I'll use my uh, white acrylic paint pen to kind of write in uh, some, some uh, interesting um, lettering and uh, you know I just I just did a little research and, and found some of these images online here um, that just kind of read like coca-cola or cola and, and so just uh, using my pen because it's just so much easier to get that that level of detail kind of traced in with my pen all right so we're gonna have this um, kind of awning that I wanted to get painted in here it helped to kind of push everything back now a little bit more on this shop and then just kind of start adding the details you know I'm, I'm using um, so, some light sienna colors and, and browns and yellows um, just to kind of give that indication we've got some glow reflecting off of these posts uh, from from the shop and it's just a matter of uh, kind of kind of uh, blending this in now I'm coming back and I'm stippling on with my my paint. It's, a, it's just an old round, um, an old round natural hairbrush uh, paintbrush here, and and um, it's so old that it's gotten really splayed out on the hairs, and I can really get some really cool effects. And I just want to create some texturing here. This is going to become the gravel and all the uh, little rocks that I wanted to have uh, here in front of the store. This took quite a while um, to go through this because I'm using such a tiny head on this, on this, uh, with this brush. But you know, it it, it it takes time, but it was worth it. And uh, I'm just using um, purple and and uh, well, it's, it's a dioxazine purple with a little white and a little bit of um, of raw umber. And now I'm just kind of splattering and speckling paint uh, in and throughout this this whole area here with my uh, fan brush. Um, and and I just want to get a little bit more splatter because uh, again I want these to just look like old, old rocks and pebbles. And as I kind of work forward I'm kind of creating a little bit larger uh, rocks to give that illusion that it's it's a little bit closer into the foreground and as we recede back to the back my little rocks become a, a lot smaller and that'll that'll aid in in the illusion here it's just important to keep thinking about uh, your value system think about uh, what plane um, you're working on because you want everything all the shapes and sizes to correspond with that particular value uh, is, is it a close value or is it a, a mid range value or is it a distant value and obviously the further back it is the less detail you need cooler colors you'll be using but as you work forward you want to kind of introduce warmer colors you want to introduce a little bit more detail um, and you want those those uh, shapes to be larger you know naturally they'll be they'll be a little larger as you move to the foreground so I've already gone ahead and kind of drawn in my uh, my car I wanted to have a, um, a couple old gas pumps I wanted a big kind of uh, a sign with with a lamp post right by the gas pumps and and have this this really cool uh, old uh, Corvette um, here in the painting that I thought would just be kind of really cool because if I envisioned myself I don't own a I don't own a convertible Corvette I wish I did but uh, in my mind if I were going to be cruising through uh, a dark desert highway I'm going to either be in a really cool 1950s or 1960s style Corvette or I'm going to be on a on a chopper or a Harley or something that would just be my idea of uh, how I would kind of daydream wanting to do a cool road trip like this and um, so I'm, I'm just painting in now this sign um, and this lamp post here and uh, first just kind of blocking this all in I'm using kind of a, a light gray and then my dark paint pen here 
uh, just to kind of get the outline and get all the, the shape correct. And then just kind of painting in this Texaco sign. I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a, a neat uh, old-fashioned uh, Texaco sign here and uh, and have that on the lamppost. So um, kind of get this worked in really quickly. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot of cool uh, signage. Um, you know, this is an old-time gas station, been around forever and ever, and just kind of a historic kind of a landmark that you'd find uh, traveling down uh, historic Route 66. And then I'm just kind of blocking in everything now, blocking in these uh, gas pumps. I wanted to use charcoal black uh, just to help me to keep the theme very dark. And that's kind of precisely why I wanted to do it. Keep it dark, make it look old. Uh, as I start to layer paint on top of it, I'll be using very transparent colors so that the that dark underpainting can still sort of show through and that'll give that illusion of, of age. And then um, kind of using a light uh, bluish gray for for the uh, the white sections on these pumps. And of course, since they're facing away from, from the light source, um, you're just going to use very muted kind of grayed out tones uh, to give that that illusion. We're not really adding a lot of highlight except for more silhouette um, colors that are kind of facing uh, the store and facing you know right below that lamppost. And um, but but it will be it'll continue to be really dark and there's just gonna be a lot of shadow here. And just using a, a dry brush technique, um, and what I'm what I'm allowing to, this to do is I'm allowing each layer to dry, uh, take a few minutes and let it dry, and then I'll just add another another layer on top of that, and I'll just dry brush blend, um, and that's really since I'm using acrylic, that's really the the best way that I found to uh, create these these effects using acrylic paint since they dry so quickly but I really enjoy the quick dry time. Um, sometimes it can be a bit of a, a hassle if you need some blending time, but for the most part, I'll just let it dry and I'll just dry brush uh, blend my, my next layer of color on top of the, the dry background. All right, so we're gonna start painting in this Corvette now. So once again, just blocking everything in with uh, charcoal black and and then I wanted to also lay in some um, some kind of gold tones uh, to give the indication that the light is striking the pebbles here at the back. So I've just mixed a yellow and an orange and a white together uh, to achieve that. Now coming back and painting in my red, what I've what I've done here since it's going to be mostly in shadows, I'm taking my cadmium red, I'm taking a little bit of uh, sap green, and I'm taking some doxazine purple. And those three colors, I'm creating a really dark um, reddish kind of tone here. Um, and I first want to get that all painted in, and uh, then I can start introducing the highlights, which uh, when I bring in my highlights for the, the uh, red tones here, it's going to be cad red and cad yellow with uh, some titanium white. And so that's how I'm going to kind of jump back and forth between my lights and my dark colors here. But right now, this is just a matter of really kind of just blocking things in, not really taking too much detail, just being kind of slower and taking my time and, and painting in this uh, these shapes, uh, which is pretty important. And then I can use my highlight colors to really start to, to shape out um, this car a little bit more and add, add a little bit more level of that detail. But a lot of it's just going to be, you know, remaining in shadow, really. And so uh, I don't need to uh, introduce too many highlights. Uh, we'll just keep it kind of subtle. But uh, the car is the one of the main focal points of this painting, of course. Uh, of course, the lamp and the uh, and the general store is as well, because of the uh, the the bright 
lights that I have shining from those, which would really kind of lead the eye. But I, I really wanted to create this car kind of as the main focal point. Um, kind of introducing, uh, this is kind of like, you know, freedom. This is out uh, in, on a desert highway, taking a neat road trip, uh, just getting away from it all, uh, cruising around in, 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 a, in a Corvette, you know, and, and so this is just kind of, for me, this is like, this is like ideal, this is freedom. And that's what I wanted to uh, kind of communicate with this painting. Um, something that we all could use. We all need to get away sometimes. We all need to kind of escape. And uh, what better way than in style in a Corvette. So I'm kind of bringing in some more purples now because I wanted to get my shadow colors a little bit darker. So I'm just kind of bringing in some pure purple and just kind of scumbling it over. And since it's transparent color, it's, uh, it's still allowing that underpainting to show through. And that's kind of why I like to do the dark underpaintings with transparent uh, layers of paint on top of that. So I apologize for the noise. My son's making noise outside that you can hear him banging doors. Um, but we're coming to the end of this painting now and, and I just hope this was uh, something that uh, was helpful for you. Um, this is how it, I would uh, put together a painting kind of like this. And uh, I certainly appreciate you subscribing to my channel. That You can catch this in, in future videos as well. Um, I'm going to kind of finish this painting out. I'm adding some cactus uh, here in the foreground. This is going to serve as an eye stopper. Um, and uh, then I, to close this out, I want to create a, a, a Route 66 uh, uh, road sign here at the very end. I'll put that on the right. That'll be kind of another eye stopper on, on the, uh, on, I'm sorry, on the left side. It'll be another eye stopper on the left side. But thanks for, so much for tuning in. And uh, until next time, I'll try to introduce another fun, exciting painting. Until next time, thank you. Bye now.